HIV post exposure prophylaxis for exposed health care personnel. The post exposure prophylaxis is short term anti retroviral treatment to reduce the likelihood of HIV infection after potential exposure by, by preventing the establishment of infection or preventing new infection. The post exposure prophylaxis reduces staff exposure to HIV infections at work and also clears positive HIV infection from infected um, dendritic cells. The workplace um, accidents or injury. Uh, expose health workers to body fluids of patients and risk of um, exposure to blood and blood-borne pathogens is slightly higher for healthcare personnel the risk of infection for HIV from the percutaneous um, injury is approximately, approximately 0 to 3 percent and that of mucous membranes or non intact skin are much lower so post exposure prophylaxis is particularly effective within one to two hours and not more than 72 hours after exposure the causes an exposure considered as a um, possible risk is defined as an exposure from possibly infected blood um, tissue or other body fluids through a percutaneous injury for example a needle stick or um, cut with a sharp object or a mucocutaneous membrane or non intact um, contact that's chubbed, abraded skin. The risk of infection appears to be um, higher after exposure to large quantities of blood or to other infectious fluids and exposure to the blood of a patient in an advanced HIV um, disease stage. Also, a deep percutaneous injury or an injury with a hollow ball or a blood filled needle. Signs none, symptoms none. Um, the steps to prevent occupational transmission of HIV. So, in the event of possible exposure to HIV, the following actions should be taken. The wound site should be cleaned with soap and water. For mucous membranes, the exposed area should be flushed with plenty of water. For example, eyes with water or saline. And assess the level of risk. The risk of possible infection from the exposure should be assessed and classified based on the categories um, below. So, the categories I'm going to mention. So, very low exposure. That's exposure to potentially infectious material in intact skin. Low risk exposure. That's exposure to a small volume of blood or body fluids contaminated with blood from asymptomatic HIV positive patient. Also injury with solid needle or any superficial injury or mucocutaneous exposure. For high risk exposure, as a exposure to large volume of blood or potentially infectious and fluids. Exposure to body or blood or body fluids contaminated with blood from an HIV positive patient with high viral load. Also injury with a hollow ball needle or deep and extensive injury with a contaminated sharp instrument. Finally, exposure to blood from an HIV drug resistant patient. Investigations are full blood counts, liver and renal function tests, hepatitis B surface antigen, and HIV serology or PCR if available. The main treatment objective is to establish, um, to prevent establishment of HIV infection. Non-pharmacological treatment, the um, counseling and testing. Exposed health workers must receive counseling and testing immediately from a trained counselor. The section is to continue throughout the post-exposure prophylaxis period and thereafter if necessary. Refusal of HIV tests by any exposed um, worker should be documented. Counselor must emphasize safe sex, including condom use, and all known source um, patients shall also be counseled and tested for HIV infection if this is not known. The pharmacological treatment, a timing if post exposure 
and prophylaxis is necessary it should be initiated promptly preferably within one to two hours post exposure and not more than 72 hours after exposure for low very low risk you wash exposed area immediately with soap and water and low risk give tenofovir 300 milligrams daily for 28 days and um, emtricitabine 200 milligrams daily for 28 days or is it over then 300 milligrams 12 hourly for 28 days and um so if you use it over then and lamivudin 150 milligrams 12 hourly for um, 28 days for high risk if there's combination tenofovir and tricetabine and um, lupinavir or etonavir so um tenofovir 300 milligrams daily for 28 days and then tricetabine 200 milligrams daily for 28 days and lupinavir or etonavir 400 milligrams 100 milligrams 12 hourly for 28 days or zidovudin lamivudin lupinavir uh, um, Zidovudin 300 mg stove hourly for 28 days and Lamivudin 150 mg stove hourly for 28 days and Lopinavir right to 400 mg 100 mg stove hourly for 28 days. If the source patient is HIV, HBV co infected, then a tenofovir containing regimen should be used. So follow up during the period of prophylaxis, a number of baseline follow up investigations needs to be need to be done to determine HIV um serous status and to monitor the level of drug toxicity. A recommended monitoring of drug toxicity and HIV serology of exposed health care personnel. Baseline tests, um you do full blood counts. Um, liver and renal function test, hepatitis B surface antigen, HIV serology or PCR if available. Two weeks. Um, you do a full blood count and liver and renal function test. Six weeks. You do HIV serology. Three months HIV serology and six months HIV serology. The individuals who um, seroconverts should have access to comprehensive care and ART services. Reporting and documentation. So all occupational exposures should be reported immediately to the supervisor and circumstances of the exposure and, and post-exposure prophylaxis management should be recorded too. Details should include date and time of exposure, when and how the exposed or care, exposure occurred, the exposure site on the body and the type of sharp device, the type and estimated amount of exposure fluid, severity as the depth or extent of the exposure, the source of exposure and whether the source material contained HIV or blood, and um, clinical status of source patient, relevant information about exposed health care worker, Medical conditions, vaccinations, including H and um, hepatitis B and medications, also pregnancy or breastfeeding. And you document counseling, post exposure management, and follow ups.